And the other great thing also about survey research is I've been doing work on the world values using some similar issues, and it's great when it replicates, and you can use the Afrobarometer, and we're coming to some really strong conclusions. I think it makes it really robust. Nicholas, Nicholas Kerr from uh, Michigan State, who is also going to take up this theme and also use the Afrobarometer data. Okay. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, you know, without sounding repetitive, I really want to thank people Norris for the opportunity no, okay. to present <laughs> this research, and especially from the perspective of a, an emerging scholar. Um, it's really great to be able to present research and share research in a room with such established scholars. So I, I, I'm very appreciative. Welcome. Okay. Uh, today, uh, my paper focuses on public perceptions of election quality in Africa, uh, and it's a generally a, a cross-national analysis. And the uh, paper is really driven by this main research question. How do citizens formulate their perceptions of election, in, of election quality in Africa? And as Professor Mattis uh, has um, you know, ex ex excellently articulated, you know, there is uh, public perceptions of election quality have relevance for the academic community. And it also has relevance for the policy community. I have. I just managed to. Okay. <laughs> I, can, I can still hear you. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, but that's fine. So are we good? Okay, all right. So uh, as I was saying that uh, public perceptions of election quality have important relevance or relevance for the academic community, but also for the scholarly community. As, and as Professor Mattis uh, highlighted, uh, a lot of academics and scholars have been focusing on the consequences of public perceptions of election quality, especially on uh, political behavior and also political attitudes. Uh, various studies have highlighted the ways in which perceptions of election quality, especially in Africa, have a positive influence on a perceived supply of democracy. And there have also been specific studies looking at the ways in which citizens' perceptions of election quality have also had an influence on their political behavior. Recent research in Kenya points to how citizens view the quality of elections and the impact that had on their propensity to engage in electoral violence. From the perspective of uh, uh, the policy community, uh, policy practitioners, various organizations have also been utilizing public perceptions of election quality. I can utilize the example of the Electoral Commission in uh, South Africa, where they have commissioned numerous surveys to really tap into how citizens have been uh, 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 evaluating the quality of the election. For instance, how much time they're spending in, in lines at the polling station, what's their evaluation of the performance of the, the workers at the polling station, station to use this to help to enhance their de service delivery, especially with the administration of election. But although there's a, a lot of focus on um, in, in the academic community on the consequences of public perceptions of election quality, very little work has gone into how citizens actually develop their election quality perceptions. Okay, and this is even so the case in sub-Saharan Africa. So if we take the perspective of this voter, here's a, 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 a photo I took of a voter in Nigeria, okay? And if we take the perspective of this regular voter, we're not sure up until this point if uh, his or her perceptions of election quality reflect uh, an evaluation of what happens on election day or the entire electoral cycle. If it reflects their experiences with electoral management bodies or their experiences with electoral fraud or manipulation, or is it just dependent on whether or not their party wins at the polls? And also with respect to scope, are citizens going back to previous elections to try to formulate their perception of what, of the quality of the current election. And so here, uh, my research really tries to, to tap into this gap within the literature, especially looking at the, the ways in which citizens formulate their perceptions of election quality. And I, I, I make an argument, 
pretty similar to, to, to Emily, that it's important for us, both from the perspective of practitioners and scholars, to be able to assess how citizens formulate their perceptions of election quality. Here I am presenting a paper that looks at one dimension of an overall project, and it really uh, tries to examine the cross-national variation and also the uh, within-country variation in citizens' perceptions of election quality using recent data from the Afrobarometer at the uh, individual level, but also using uh, uh, data at the election level uh, from a, a few of the cross-national data sets. All right, now what do I mean by uh, election quality perceptions or public election quality perceptions? Uh, what I do here and I do in the paper is that I try to ground um, the conceptualization of election quality in the concepts of uh, freedom and fairness. Here I refer to the work by Elklid and Sivinson on um, the various ways in which you can uh, differentiate between the freedom uh, dimension of electoral quality and that fairness dimension. And although this term is utilized over and over again in the literature, uh, I, I highlight uh, the ways in which citizens or, or various factors might influence citizens' free, uh, perceptions or evaluations of the freedom and fairness of the election. And as other scholars have done, I focus on multiple phases of the election cycle. Now, what I've done in the larger project is really try to categorize various factors that might actually be influencing citizens' election quality perceptions. So the first major category is looking at the impact of election administration. The second looks at the overall characteristics of the electoral environment. And the third, individual attributes. And some of them are quite uh, similar. But what is most important is that I try to show the various ways in which these factors might be influencing citizens' notion of the freedom and fairness of the election. So I look at the impact of the performance of electoral management bodies. And here, performance really means the extent to which electoral management bodies are able to display a high degree of autonomy, but also a high degree of capacity in, um, in, in, in various stages of election administration. I look also at the electoral environment, looking at incidents of electoral malpractice and how that might shape citizens' views towards the freeness and fairness of the election, and a few individual attributes. Party affiliation, which uh, the, the panels this morning and also yesterday spoke a lot about, and Professor Mattis also made reference to it, but also this concept of political awareness, right? And here, this, this, this variable I'm, 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 I'm working on, so I would uh, invite any comments on that, with the notion that individuals who have greater political awareness are more cognizant of the norms and uh, laws that are associated with uh, electoral quality. Uh, just quickly here, I show the main hypothesis, and they're just a repetition here where I expect uh, EMB performance to increase citizens' uh, perceptions of the freeness and fairness of elections, and um, with the other main uh, uh, causal factors that I've highlighted. With regard to the data and methods, here I utilize a multi-level model that includes elections across 28 uh, election periods in 18 African countries with uh, 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 approximately 40,000 citizens. The main dependent variable is the freedom, freedom and fairness of the last election, uh, which is a question on the Afrobarometer. And here are the, the main independent variables. The EMB performance index, uh, that's taken from Kelly, uh, two indicators that represent present the pre-election administrative problems, but also the, election, the administrative problems during uh, the election day, electoral malpractice, party affiliation, and I also try to proxy uh, political awareness looking at education, media exposure, interest of politics, and a few controls at the individual level and the election level. But let me just jump straight uh, forward to the results. Here I show the results. Uh, of, 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 of the regression analysis. And again, we're looking at some of the main sources of uh, Africans' election quality perceptions. And what you should realize is that uh, most of the hypotheses are confirmed with, re with uh, the only uh, 
uh, indicator that's not significant is the one for fraud and also for media exposure, but all others are confirmed. A better way of just showing this is just looking at the predicted probability uh, figure that just shows a change in citizens' uh, perceptions of free and fair elections when I vary independent one, a specific independent variable from its minimum value to its maximum value. And here we find that EMB performance, the actual autonomy and capacity of the EMB has the greatest impact on citizens' election quality perceptions. In countries that EMBs are free, uh, uh, EMBs perform well, citizens are more likely to believe that elections are free and fair. And you see that significant impact. So there are other um, variables that I've highlighted. Education has a negative impact. Uh, losing uh, uh, partisans are less likely to believe that elections are free and fair, and, and there are the results. So in terms of the main uh, findings, African election quality perceptions are multidimensional, and this is very much in line with the research uh, that was discussed uh, yesterday uh, with respect to their Americanist, uh, but one of the things that comes out uh, very clearly in the research is that EMB performance matters, and I think this is an important finding. It speaks to the centrality of electoral management bodies and how they influence how citizens view uh, the quality of elections. Uh, and but for policy experts, you know, who have been in the field, this might not be a surprising finding. But I think for the academic community, those of us who do work cross-national work, this is very important because up until this point, we've been focusing a lot on um, uh, various measures of electoral management bodies that focus on formal legal uh, dimensions of uh, uh, di formal legal characteristics, such as formal legal independence. And the results haven't been as consistent. And here, the, the results show that the actual performance matters. And we should expect that within certain contexts where um, rule of law is weak or there is um, the formal institutionalization of formal rules is an ongoing process. Uh, and I can speak some more about some other aspects of it, the extent to which political affiliation matters uh, and... Uh, thank you so much for uh, listening to the presentation, and um, I, I welcome any comments or questions that you might have at the end. So thank, thank you. Thank you so much.